How about that cigar? How about that cigar? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's another beautiful Tuesday evening for us. If you're watching live on Facebook, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, mm -hmm. Garrett and I are here at Fuego's Cigar Lounge in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, we have uh, Rob Gagne from Bovada with us. Uh, we're going to introduce him and bring him on and, and have him tell us uh, some awesome stuff. But just to get us started, kind of like we always do, Garrett, um, I almost feel sad that we have to talk about it, but we're going to talk about the Minnesota Twins. Yeah. <laughs> I know, exactly. You, you kind of, it makes you feel a little bit sick inside the fact that yeah. uh, it was, it was uh, five and a half weeks ago that we had an uh, 11 game lead. And um, now we are behind a half game. I think we're behind a half, half game. game. Um, both teams are actually Cleveland and uh, Minnesota are playing separate games. Obviously right now yep. we're playing the Brewers. They're playing the Red Sox. Last I saw Cleveland was down to the Sox, And I don't know if Minnesota game had started yet. Cause we're, there was a rain delay, I think. So, uh, but one thing that holds uh, maybe holds out some hope for us is the fact that uh, we have some pretty, hopefully, maybe some easier series coming up, and they have some tougher series coming up. We do, and we were missing a few key players in that series with Cleveland where we lost a lot of ground. So I think by getting some of those guys back in the lineup is really going to yeah, turn that around. Well, um, thanks again, guys, for watching. If, if you're listening to the audio podcast, thanks for listening on your favorite podcast app. Please make sure to take a second, rate the podcast five stars, uh, subscribe to it uh, so you don't miss an episode. Uh, a, a show note for those who have uh, been using iHeartRadio, we are finally available now on iHeartRadio. So if you listen to your podcasts there, Boom. we're available there now as well. So uh, pretty much all the big players in the podcast world, you'll be, you'll be able to uh, listen to us now. Um, so this is episode 21. The podcast is old enough to drink. Boom. So, you know, we're moving. Bottoms up. Things are moving and, and we're excited about it. Um, again, uh, if you guys are watching live on Facebook, please take the time, leave a comment. If you have any questions for us, kind of as we get rolling, we'd love to do that. We've got this new app that we're using where we can get questions kind of out to everybody and, and everybody can kind of participate. It's kind of a cool thing that we're trying out. Um, so I just don't want to go any further. I want to introduce Rob. Um, yeah. Rob Rob is a, an account manager with Bovida. And Bovida, if anybody who has, um, you know, if you've been a cigar smoker, even for a short period of time, I have a feeling that it's a name that you are familiar with. But um, we're grateful to have Rob here to tell us a little bit more about the company, about the products that can make the lives of premium cigar smokers easier and, you know, more fulfilling and take better care of our cigars. Um, Rob was nice enough to bring us these lovely uh, El Baracho from Dapper Cigar Company. Uh, it's a beautiful San Andreas wrapper. We're loving these so much. San Andreas. So, uh, Rob, say good evening. Say hi to everybody. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, if you are on Facebook and you're live right now, send in those Boba questions. I definitely want to answer them. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, thank you guys for having me on the show. Thanks for coming out to uh, Fuegos and setting up. I know it's not always easy to travel, but that was awesome. So yeah, it's actually it. it's fun having it kind of in a because we've done we did the remote location at at Fat Ash. Yep, and um, you know it's it's kind of fun actually. I mean, it's a little hectic. You know, you got a bunch of equipment you got to get hooked up and tested and make sure everything works. But it's kind of fun going to a separate location and and this place is just comfortable. It's yeah. plush. It's you can you can kind of relax a little bit. So it's yeah. really a great place. Great, great spot to smoke. Um, memberships are always available. So yeah, reach out to Greg. Yeah, if you're in the Minneapolis St. Paul <laughs> area, you know, um, check it out. There's uh, there's great memberships to be had, and it's a great place to come and relax and smoke. Definitely. So just to give you guys an idea of where I started, I I started actually at Tobacco Grove uh, about in my college days, um, and I started working just retail behind the counter, learning the humidor, getting inside, understanding the cigars. Um, what is Mexican San Andreas? What is Connecticut? You know, what is all that about? Uh, really learned a lot from Jeff, Cole, Rick, all those guys over there teaching me the yeah. ways, understanding, uh, what questions to ask really. That's kind that of what great. it comes down to. Yeah. You know, what questions to ask. That's right. It's more than anything. If you tell somebody what to smoke, usually doesn't go very well, but if you suggest something based off of what they like, they they'll be well received so kind of really cut my teeth in retail there 
understanding heck even back then i used bovida but i didn't really understand all the different nuances of humidity control i didn't understand why my humidor would drop all of a sudden um you know i didn't think about i didn't think about humidity control the way i do now which is really kind of now that I think about it, it's like I have to remember that other people don't think about it every day like I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I have to sit back and be like, okay, I get I get where you're coming from. Yeah. But I don't remember, you know, thinking like that for a long time. Exactly. So because I've been at Bovina now for about three years, uh, and really, I kind of cut my teeth there too, just in the customer service area. Yeah. I was responsible for answering any questions, phone calls, emails, uh, anything that was coming in related to why something isn't working in my humidor yeah and that was the number one question that i got why is my rh level low so are you cigars only uh no i mean our company it does right. music and so, other stuff and um, cannabis. but your yeah. but, but your my, role specifically but your role, your role specific only, okay yes. got it so my primary role is um there's about three people primarily dedicated just to tobacco and then there's a bunch of other people behind the scenes as well you know, over 50 plus people at Bovida now. Wow. We start, I started three years ago with like, you know, maybe 15. Yeah. So and it wasn't, really grown. it wasn't until, cause you and I met at IPCPR. Mm-hmm. Um, you were on the flight out and I was like, yeah, you're from Minneapolis. And you're like, yeah. I'm like, Oh, I, I know blind man's well, you know, well, I know yeah. Where and, you guys and, and that's when I said to myself, Bovida is a Minnesota company. I had, I just never even thought to look right? where Bovida was from. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that's back when I was with, um, you know, when I was with Blind Man's Puff. And then all of a sudden, yeah, we're like, oh, we're on the, oh, we're I know, I know, here. I know you. And yeah. then, um, yeah, it was cool to find out, you know, it's always nice to find out if there's a, you know, a local company that, uh, you know, is, is in a business that you appreciate and that you get a lot right. out of. Absolutely. People still today ask me, you know, even retailers will ask me like, so can my order arrive now? And I'm like, yeah, I'm putting it in now. It's going to ship out tomorrow. They're like, oh, well, I just thought maybe you had to get the stuff from China. It's like, absolutely not. You know, like we, we make everything in Wisconsin and we're in Minnesota right now. So everything's stateside. So the production's in Wisconsin. Yep. Um, is distribution also from there? Yeah, that's okay. Everything everything's that, handled. That up. hub okay. is right there. Okay. So we don't have any other warehouses anywhere else. Um, we're working on trying to get you know products stashed in other places. Yeah. Just for ease, but other than that, it's it's coming out of Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. Okay. So when Aaron Rodgers isn't slinging pigskins, exactly. We got him <laughs> in the back. Just he'll he'll go long and throw it right into the box, and yep. then Kristen will catch it and. Choo, off shoes. Nice. Boom. I yeah. like it. Awesome. Well, and he can actually put throws where they're meant to go, yeah. which is good. Well, yeah, it is. You know, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, about all the compliments uh, he'll get from me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Rob, before you, because you said you cut your teeth, you know, early on working behind the counter at Tobacco Grove, which yeah. is a, you know, again, if you're in the Twin Cities area, Tobacco Grove, phenomenal cigar shop. Yeah. Um, take us back to your sort of Spider Man origin story. That first time that you. You know whether it was a friend or a family member let you try a premium cigar and just you know what the how you got into the hobby oh yeah and it wasn't nobody got me in it was i saw people smoking cigars and i wanted it and in fact i you know illegally obtained you know (laughs) confession mom don't listen we've all been there we've all Um, been there but you know like i worked at a kitchen and one guy smoked and i was like dude could you give me some cigars and one thing led to another and i'm out you know smoking cigars with my best friend, you know, trying to figure out what it's all about. And you're just, you know, it's drier than dry. It doesn't taste good, but you're like, this is cool. Yeah. You know, so right. that was my like experience, but I always had like a, a desire to like try to figure this thing out. Yeah. yeah. Whatever it was. Cause I wasn't really attracted to cigarettes or anything like that. It just never really did it for me. Mm-hmm. But then as soon as I saw tobacco grove in my backyard and I turned 18, it was like, I walked in and I'll tell you, it was definitely intimidating at first because, like, I'm young. I'm looked at, you know, kind of like, here's a young guy. Is he just, you know, what is he doing in here? You know, you never, but you you stick with it. Yeah. That's what it was. Like, they weren't trying to push me out the door, but I felt that, you know, I yeah. felt just my own personality being like, I got, how do I make myself comfortable here? Mm. just because you know a lot of older men and they know what they're doing can kind yeah. of be intimidating. intimidating yeah so the store was great cole was great he you know jeff was great they just kind of 
help me understand tobacco. I started with some acids. I started with some Connecticut's, uh, kind of got my palate going. Yeah. And then after that, it was off to the races. And but before you know it, at a smoke shop, that's a good smoke shop. People know you by name. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then that's first totally you're the young guy or the new guy or, hey, you know, I see you coming around more often. What's your name? Like, that was a great feeling. Right? Just yeah. that right there. The inclusion? Like, yeah. Like, as soon as a, an older guy acknowledged me and yeah. wanted me to, like. That's so true. I mean, that first time that God, you walk into. It's great. The first time that you walk into a cigar shop you know, after you've been going there maybe, you know, five or six times, however many times it is. And that first time you walk in and somebody says, hey, Rob, hey, Matt, hey, get whatever it is. And you hear somebody just greet you by name. It just, it feels like a million bucks. Yeah, Even cheers. if it's the wrong name. <laughs> oh, yeah. You totally. know? Totally. It You've made it. I don't ever discount that. No. Like, I'm just like, hey, thanks for saying that. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah you, and I don't even correct them. I'm like, yeah, yeah dude, I'll be Jeff today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Hadiki. Yeah, yeah. You know. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, so. that works. So tell us a, a little bit about, you know, you're an account manager. So. For, for people word. who aren't in the business, you know, yeah. what does that mean? I mean, you, you obviously have, you have relationships with clients, you have relationships with a lot of different people. Tell us kind of the ins and outs of what you do for Bovida. Yeah. So as an account manager, my primary role is to work with retailers, making sure that one, they have the product that they need and two, their staff understands the product that they, they have on hand. So that's really the, the main role that I play. I'm working with a lot of our you know, what, what we would call like our top 200 accounts. And I'm also working with, you know, just anybody who calls in as yeah. well. Um, I got some, so, some really good people that also help me with that. Um, like sales coordinators, yeah. Leah Johnson. I know some of you guys out there on Facebook know her. She's great helping me out, um, helping the company out just with getting, getting people orders, making sure that the, everything's running smoothly. If there's a misshipment, she tackles it, has it, you know, figured out by the end of the day. So it's really just catering yeah. to those retailers that need our services. And then my role as an account manager is really pushing the envelope for them to really say like, how do we get the right product in that people are going to use? And how do we also educate the staff on it? Yeah. So it's just really being mindful of, because when I worked in retail, I didn't know everything about Boveda. Yeah. And so I'm just super mindful of, you know, making sure we supply that education because mm. otherwise it just gets a little bit, eh, I don't really know, but I want to provide an answer to this mm -hmm. customer that's having this problem. Um, and, and we just want to make sure they give the right answer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and I also, I want to give a quick reminder to everybody who's watching right now on Facebook. Um, uh, Rob was kind enough to bring some giveaways for us tonight. So leave those comments, leave those questions while we're live because we're going to choose two lucky winners this evening. Uh, at random, uh, and we'll choose those winners, and they're gonna they're gonna win some some great Bovida products. And um, we probably won't announce, but we also want to remind viewers of last week that we did have a giveaway. Yep. we're gonna be announcing um, those on our Facebook page and Instagram. Yep. later this week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I just haven't had the time. I wanted to get nice pictures taken of all the stuff. Yep, I just haven't had time to do it yet. So, um, so give give our viewers give our listeners you know because everybody knows you've got to keep your cigars at the right relative humidity it, it you know it keeps them uh keeps them at a smokable stage where where they're they're not too dry they're not too wet uh the flavors stay the right way you know all that stuff so uh, but one way humidity can be you know a killer you know so give our viewers and listeners a rundown on what why why two-way humidity and how does it work? Yeah, good question. One-way humidity, obviously, is just those sponges, those things that you fill with distilled water. I've wrecked, you know, three or four humidors. Oh. Also, a bunch of Connecticut's. With know. those, with that green floral foam inside yeah. of them. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you know, when you see a diamond crown exp explode, oh. it just kills you. Oh. Yeah, it's yep. one of the lightest wrappers, and it's like... I couldn't do anything to, to keep those safe. So I would just buy them at the shop and smoke them there. I just refuse to take them home. Yeah. But now I don't, I don't worry about light wrappers. I have a bunch of different types of light wrappers. I don't have to worry about it. But the thing with Boba is that it's wrapped inside a two way kind of reverse osmosis system. So it's letting off pure water vapor and then it's also absorbing it. Yeah. And salt, it sounds corny, but salt is the rock star of that whole thing. 
salt naturally wants to hold water and it naturally wants to give it off as soon as it's exposed to an environment that's above or below its relative humidity point. Okay. So it's going to give it off if it's above and, uh, or sorry, if it's in an environment above, it's going to absorb and If yep. it's in an environment lower, it's going to give it off. And that's where we kind of get that sweet spot where you don't have to worry about it anymore. So long as you're using the right number of boveda, you shouldn't have any problems with your relative humidity. Now, you might have fresh cigars in there that are at a lower relative humidity level, and then the boat is going to be giving it off, giving you on your hygrometer maybe another two to five points lower, which is common. So now I've gone to the point where I don't even put fresh cigars in the humidor that I smoke out of every day. Okay. I put them in a different one. Okay. I let them come up. I give them four weeks to come up. And then right around four to six weeks, they're usually good to go. And I put them inside my wood humidor. Yeah. So, but really it's just salt, distilled water, and a food grade, food grade gumming agent. Mm -hmm. That food grade gumming agent allows the salt, salt to be, to be suspended and stay there okay. instead of clumping. Because we don't want the salt to clump. As soon as it starts to clump uh, and, and dry out, essentially, that the water and the, the gum, yeah, it gets a little sharp. And okay. Sharpness, that can tear that membrane. Uh, it's more like micro abrasions. If it's okay. pressed on and manipulated a lot, it takes quite a bit to get there. Yeah. But that's why I don't recommend recharging the yeah. bunker packs, even though the, the salt will kind of like absorb moisture, that food grade gumming agent starts to wear out and yeah. gets used up. Yeah. And then it just, it doesn't really dilute itself back out yeah. evenly. And then it kind of shortens the life of the bunker pack as well. So, because we, I mean, the way the the world works today with with Facebook and social media and there's tons of cigar related discussion forums things like that. You hear people talk all the time about oh I recharge them I you can recharge them you can recharge Absolutely, them and all that yeah. stuff. But they think they've got it licked. But at the end of the day, to me, it's a risk. It, and it is a risk because um, you know you'll see um, it, the last thing you want is to have a catastrophic failure with a full sized you know. Um, Bovida pack and you know that that you just kept beyond its lifespan and uh you know maybe you've got uh, a handful of uncellowed cigars that you know get destroyed because you tried to push the envelope a little too far i've seen it man yeah i worked customer service yeah exactly so yeah there's ways for us to tell how old the pack is and we use those ways and every once in a while it's like ah shucks yeah that's yeah 10 <laughs> years old sorry 10 years it's yeah. really bad <laughs> 10 yeah, years it's not good to do that but you know yeah that's the the beauty of our technology is the fact that it is mess free yeah and for me like going back and trying to like recharge it or put it into still water or mess with it or manipulate it in any way i just i'm kind of like you know if i spend a hundred dollars if i yeah. don't you wouldn't anyways it just I, I would spend it yeah. to keep my $300 or $400 or yeah. $3,000 worth of cigars fresh. Yep. So, and I've noticed, you know, I've, I've gotten cigars and we have this, uh, at work, we have this machine. It's about, you know, the size of the soundboard. It's called the water activity meter. And this is kind of boring and geeky, but apologize. It's kind of important. The water activity meter, you, you cut, you can cut off a, t the, a little bit of this cigar grind it up and put it inside there and it will tell you what amount of moisture is inside this cigar and we can convert that into the relative humidity level yeah so i'll test cigars that'll come in via mail or somebody will give me and it'll be at like 62 percent. now 62 percent isn't bad for a cigar but when i smoked it it was harsh hit me in the back of the throat it wasn't good didn't have any flavor profile so again, I put it in with Bovida in an airtight container, waited four weeks, got it up to 69, did the grind test, put it in the $8,000 water activity meter. It spit out a number and it was right at 69.9 or whatever. Yeah. Smoked it. It's perfect. Okay. All the flavors were there. I mean, it just, it really matters. And now I've, now with that information that I have, I've been like super anal about my cigar storage. And if I get something from somebody, um, no offense, if I don't know you, I'm probably not going to smoke it right away. Yeah, I'm yeah, probably totally. going to put it in in humidification and wait four weeks. Absolutely, because I'd rather not yeah. ruin the experience. Yep. Of, you know, I'd rather appreciate that scar 
uh, the way it's meant to be appreciated. Yeah. Yep. So, so as far as the, um, the two way humidity control packets, you've got, there are different levels, different, different, uh, uh, percentage amounts as far as, you know, which packet's going to give you 72, 69, 62, things like that. Tell us about why you have those difference, those different yeah. packets and what that means for, um, the guy or, or gal who is, who's keeping them in, in that humidor at home. Yeah. Great question. Uh, we started out with, I believe 72 and 69 and they're still the most popular. And that was just because we wanted to get around that, you know, 70%. Yeah. In a wood humidor, most wood humidors drop anywhere from two to 5%. So that's why 72 is out there because it's probably going to drop two points in that wood humidor. Wood humidors breathe moisture. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, glass top humidors became popular. There's obviously less expensive wood humidors. So we made a 75 because people still with 72 weren't able to reach the RH, RH level that they wanted. Yeah. So we said, okay, well, we got to make one higher. And then other people said, you know, 69 is too high, you know, and it got into, okay, well, can we make one lower than 69? So we came up with 65. And that one seemed to work really well for like really thick oily wrappers or Cubans or Puros like Opus X's really like that or people just storing cigars for a long period of time sitting on a box wanting them to age yeah for two three four years they'll store with 65 yeah just because it's a little safer um so really that's kind of where it came from and then hmm. the 84s came out because we tested and what they did was amazing they tested pretty much every single rh level from like 65 all the way up to 95 and they figured out what is the fastest yet not detrimental way to humidify the wood of a humidor okay and now this gets geeky again pushing moisture into a wood cell is like three or four different layers okay like there's like some bound water and some held water and i can't even explain it all but they've kind of showed it to me in a way of like we're trying in the situation where we're humidifying wood only we're trying to get it done in a timely manner, but we don't want to shock the wood so bad that it swells and pops and the geometry changes and everything is kind of out of the And then you maybe kill that seal, you know, yeah. on that, on the lid of your human. Well, oil. and two, I, you know, there's a good analogy. Like think of it like if you live in the desert and it rains, like all of a sudden, you know, a foot, it's just going to hit the top and run off. Yeah. It's not going to soak down in the ground. Mm -hmm. So really what you want is a slow methodical process. That's why the 84s, inside a humidor two weeks no cigars and it will actually push enough moisture to get it up and sustain it so now the wood's not taking away from your boba packs yeah because these the boba packs should last anywhere from three to six months inside a wood humidor people were calling us being like hey i only got 30 days out of it not even well we didn't season the wood right makes sense you know right we've got too many things calling for the moisture so that's the tobacco progression now we've got, you know, other SKUs or other RHs for other industries, yeah, like cannabis and, mm -hmm. and you know, guitars, Mus musical instruments, musical yeah. instruments, and heck, I had one guy call me for alligator eggs, and <laughs> we've done all sorts of different things. People have used it for uh, bagpipes now. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing is wow, keep the bagpipes, cool. reeds, musical reeds. I mean, yeah, it's amazing how many things need humidity control. And we're just happy yeah. to be called upon and hopefully we have a solution. If we don't, you know, we try to point people in the right direction. We'll have an interesting one at the end, at the end of the show. We always do toward the end of every show. We do a useless facts of the week. And uh, this week we have another, and you, you may or may not know about this, this, uh, this other item that uh, turns out needs two way humidity control. So it might be another market for you guys. Sweet. Um, so the different humidity levels on, uh, on the packets on, on the Bovida packets, you've got the seasoning uh, packet for, at, at 84%. Obviously you, somebody goes out there, they get into the cigar hobby for the first time. They buy a desktop humidor that holds what, what do you say here at 50, 50 cigars, maybe. And um, obviously Spanish cedar on the inside. You want that to, like you said, put that 84 in there, let it slowly over the course of two weeks, pull that humidity into the wood so that when you put most likely and most most new cigar smokers they're going to take uh they're going to 
go to the cigar shop. They'll buy a humidor and a handful of cigars and they'll get home. And if they take that 84 and put it in the, in their desktop humidor without cigars for two weeks, then those cigars were sitting on their dresser for two weeks, not humidified. So yeah. then they're going to put them in the humidor with the 69 or a 72 and they're going to see, you know, maybe that hygrometer drop down into the, in the low sixties. Um, they should not panic. No, what I would recommend though is, and, and before we go any further, the, this is an 84 four pack, 60 gram size. If you're doing a 50 count humidor, you're going to need two of these. Um, it says right on the back one for every 25 total capacity. Okay. So if it's a hundred count, you're going to use all four. Okay. If it's 150. You need uh, six. Yeah. If it's 200. You need eight. So that's the way you do it. Um, okay. And you, you follow that one for every 25 total capacity all the way throughout when you're working with the 60 gram. doesn't matter how many cigars are inside. If you're buying a brand new humidor, be sure to pick up those 84s, season it for two weeks, and then pick up either a Boba to one year humidor bag with some, it already comes with the 69 in it. We will probably buy 72 or 69, but for airtight containers, Boveda likes to use 69. Um, and that I would recommend keeping it. If you don't have access to a one-year humidor bag, use a Tupperware container, um, whether it be glass or plastic, it really doesn't matter. It's going to be a two week period. You just want to keep those cigars fresh. Uh, most, you know, tobacco Grove is really good because they just give you the 84s with a humidor purchase. They give you your first set of, uh, Bovidas if you want them and, you're set to go. Yeah. We found that uh, if people struggle with keeping their cigars fresh, we don't sell as many sticks. Yeah. So we just make sure people are able to keep their cigars. Yeah, that's fresh. very smart for a for so a cigar shop. That's very smart. Just keep them keep them fresh with uh, Boveda, and then again follow that one for every twenty five total capacity, whether you're using sixty nine or seventy two, and you'll be good. Um, if you want to bump up, uh, use the three twenty. This is the big boy. Um, this is essentially five of those 60 grammers in one. So you can use this for every hundred count. Now, if you guys have like wine doors, uh, cooler doors, uh, anything like that, use one of these for every cubic foot. And if you have drawers, which most of them do, I suggest getting some of the uh, 60 grammers and putting them in there as well yeah. in the drawers. Just lay them on top. Bovida is safe to touch cigars. It's not going to make a mold or be too wet or anything yeah everything's mm -hmm. very slow everything's very methodical um and it just does it naturally yeah uh a question uh from jay fifield 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 uh do you humidif do you humidify your beard with bovida uh jay yes yes i do <laughs> i do um Good. i don't use beard oil i actually um use bovida solution that mm. food grade gummy agent works really good to like get mm -hmm. it kind of somewhat just get it together. in there yeah and then the crystals from the salt really make like a good sparkle <laughs> oh yeah so and it look, helps it helps season your food as you eat oh too. yeah totally you know if i'm running low i just rub my hands mm -hmm. through there and kind of rub mm -hmm. it on my food and it's good to go yeah yeah good <laughs> yeah jay jay love you buddy thanks for thanks for that question that's, that's great. a great question um so uh because I have, like you mentioned, a wine door. I have a wine door, uh, and it's a very large one. It's, it's, you know, I think it's like a 160 bottle capacity. It's like six foot tall. It's a, it's a full size one. Sure. Um, and I have, um, I have six of the big boys, and probably another, oh, probably another thirty. Uh, of the little guys, yep. you know, and then I just go in once a month, um, and the, and I check the ones that are dry and I toss them and I go and, you know, uh, recoup, replace them. Yep. Um, and that works for me. That works for me. Um, and I don't, it's not, mine's not completely to capacity. So I do have a little bit of extra space in there, but, uh, you know, it definitely works for me. And I, because I, it's such a large storage unit for cigars i i was fighting for a long time with different methods you know different products and things like that and after mm -hmm. a while it's the thing that i love about bovida is it's it's just so easy you just buy it 
and you put it in your humid. I mean, once you're seasoned and once you're off to the races and you're actually your 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 humidor, for lack of a better term, is up and running, then it's just easy. You just throw it out and put it in another one. It's just I love it. Set it and forget. Yeah, exactly. It. Yeah, the Ronco. The Ronco. Ronco. I love that. Thing. <laughs> Set it and forget I it. I want one of those so bad. Right. <laughs> it is, just... We used to have one and it blew up on us. Oh no! Oh, kidding. Yeah. Maybe I don't. Oh yeah, it almost started a fire in the kitchen. Seriously, it was. It was. <laughs> it was ages ago. But you guys watch late night TV? I, I, yeah. I used to. Do they my... still have those commercials? Oh, they have to. Well, so just a couple nights ago, I fell asleep on the couch watching Food Network. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, were you it's hungry? my jam. Dude, the, I, I wake I, up hungry if I fall asleep dude, during on the road to Flavor Town. Uh, oh, exactly, yeah. some Triple D. Um, and I woke up to a infomercial of knives, like it's dangerous. Is like the old, I Gin, almost bought some. The dude, old Ginsu style commercial, no, 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 like no. sawing a car like, in half. Like, dude, for real, deep south, this guy had knives. All right, here we've got some knives. No, he's not Australian, but <laughs> he's like you went from Alabama to, to Australia. I know, quick. yeah. No, he was. was like, um, you know, he had all kinds of knives from, you know, um, folders and big knives and swords. Was and it katanas. like the QVC style oh, show? It was totally yeah. it wasn't like the QVC. One, like so they, no, was they had the countdown see. timer, like, oh, this one's only available exactly. for another twenty-five minutes. Blah yep, blah. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I love. You know, and totally off the cuff, Ma, go and get me uh, one of them, uh, you know, the one I'm talking about, you know, and she would come and bring a a different knife out and you would showcase. And all of a sudden it's like 3 a.m. And I'm like, I'm totally going to buy that knife. Yeah, dude. (laughs) Once they start cutting the pop can and then go back and start cutting the tomato, I'm like, so yeah, I'll just get my credit card right now. Yeah. I'm getting these. So they still, I, you know, I didn't see any other. I still have the yeah. ones my dad bought. Over thirty. The, oh, knives. Broncos. Oh, so, wow. So I, you know, late night TV. Yeah. He's up there, buys them. You don't ever have to sharpen these again. They're still sharp. I swear. I swear <laughs> to God, I still use them every day. Wow. No, we still it's have crazy. we still have the ones we got for our wedding, and that was twenty one years ago, and they work just fine. See, there I didn't even know what kind they are. They work fine. Somebody right. probably bought them off of late night TV and gave them to you guys. Hey, that would be cool. Well, See? and we've got an expensive <laughs> set of Chicago's, you know, good knives. But yeah. it, you have to, I mean, well, certain kinds of knives, as long as you put them on a stone, you know, a couple I times a year, them. you're fine. You know, at least I've quarterly. I've mine. I don't know. Bottom off the, uh, the TV. I get <laughs> All right. dad, dad. I'm gonna have to pull the trigger on it. Yeah. So let's let's come back to sorry. The, no, that's all good. good. I love it. Let, let's t- let's come back to the cigar world. Um um, you know, the, the, the big trade show was just, uh, you know, not super long ago, just, uh, uh, end of June, early July. Um, you were at the trade show this year. Yep. Um, tell us about, um, some of the new cigars that were released at the show that you maybe have had a chance to try, uh, or haven't had a chance to try yet. Um, what are some of the things that you're excited about? You know, um, I didn't get to go around enough to the ones that were new. Um, if any of you guys have been following anything I do, you know I love, or I, I, I love the Dissident. I know not everyone loved mm-hmm. that. Uh, the Block, that was my jam. I was a big I fan. Heard, I heard that was coming back. I didn't even get to go see those guys. Yeah, so it is It is coming back. And I, I still have I still have two one? of the OG. You have just two? I have two of the OG Block Lanceros left. Do you left. really like those? I love them. I have several boxes. Oh, Okay, so we we'll might talk have to later. Do some trading. We'll talk we'll, later. We'll, we'll be doing oh, some talking because <laughs> I, I I just covered them. Like I find them. I got Max yeah. that look out for me. Uh, Mike is on. Thank you very much. I got a couple boxes from him. He's like, hey, I got a guy that nice. has some, and I'm like, nice. yeah, I just I buy him up. Um, but yeah, that was one that I was looking forward to. You know the the company that I mean recently I've kind of gravitated towards is um, Platinum Nova. They came out with nine new cigars this year. They had some limited edition stuff uh, that they started with, and I was just blown away at the quality of their stuff. I was just unbelievable. Just nuances that I couldn't always pick up. Unbelievable. And for me, I'm always looking at a cigar from the standpoint of, you know, if it's new, great. 
Um, but really, it's got to be something that I'm like, yeah, this is, you know, tasty. I could definitely sit down and enjoy this. I like to use the term box worthy. Yeah. Like if it's box worthy that I buy a whole box, yep. I'm ready. I'm ready to dive in on that. Um, you know, Matt, I really didn't get around enough. No, I understand that. Get enough. Well, because you're working your own booth. Yeah, you, you know, know you've got retailers coming up we all day were, asking you questions. We were shooting a lot of videos, and so yeah, I was on. I was on. Well, my, I have to confess because I consider myself to be relatively mm -hmm. informed in the premium cigar world. I have never heard of this brand you just mentioned. Platinum Nova. Yeah. Yeah, not a not a ton of people were um, too aware. They came out. Even for me, they you know the only reason I knew about them is because they called me and they said we want to package with Boba. How new is the brand? Do you know? You know, it's they launched. I want to say maybe a year or two ago, two years ago probably. But really now is when they're coming out with more and yeah, really kind of pushing yeah. to get the brand out there. So hats off to uh, Leo and Ari who are running the show over there. They're doing a good job, uh, just making stuff happen and really really good. Stuff. Good yeah. flavor. No, that's really Flavors cool. Guys. Awesome. Um, so the you know things shifted a little bit this year at the trade show. You know they changed the name. Uh, they're going to be adding some components next year with a with a consumer day. Um, you know, uh, does it does it really? I mean, I assume it's still business as usual for Bovida. You're still you're still trucking along with your core with your core stuff. You're I'm sure there's a lot of innovation going on behind the scenes working on you know, new product innovations for the future, things like that. So um, does it, does the, do the changes for the, the IPCPR slash now called the PCA, does it really affect Bovida in any significant 100%. way? Yeah. Oh, oh it does. It will because okay. what I like to, uh, I want, I'm, I'm liking the challenge that we got going on here with PCA coming on board. The first day is going to be consumer base, uh, which is going to be interesting because we can't sell on that day. Yeah. So we're not going to be able to sell to retailers. So even day. even non-tobacco products is that the the rule? Well, you just can't sell on that day. Is okay. What said because okay. of what's going on. So I'm going to be looking forward to the opportunity um, that hopefully manufacturers will have and to turn this into something different than most cigar events. Yeah. And really, kind of the the way I've been talking to most manufacturers is let's really get in tune with. Hey, I don't get to go to Rocky's place all the time. I don't get to go to Lito Gomez's place. Um, let's bring that to PCA. Let's mm. have them talk about their cigars and how they process them, and you know what's important to them. And then let's also have you know some of them talk about having a band and a little party and a little get together. Um, that's a great opportunity for me to one not only experience your cigar but be in your presence, uh, kind of understand the culture that you live and yeah. what you bring to the table. I think um, seminars, talking, Davidoff does a great job at like giving seminars. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And I think it, you know, consumers should have that experience, but we really have to focus then that day that consumers are there and really kind of hone in on what's going to be important. Um, and I think those, those educational moments, those exposure moments, um, those opportunities to meet and greet with the people that are there, not just in a sense of like, hey, let me have your cigar in a picture, mm -hmm. but really understand your mm -hmm. process, your passion, yeah. your whole uh, essence, maybe your your story of who you are and where you want to go. Um, I think that's super unique to IPCPR or PCA, is yeah. what it's called now. I think that's going to be super unique if they can tell that story in that line. Yeah, that's really cool. Because mm -hmm. um, I'll be honest, when, it, when I first heard about it, I had mixed feelings. And I still have mixed feelings, but I think... I think the devil is in the details, um, and if uh, if the organization, if if PCA as an organization really digs in, and um, if they do well with with uh, uh, digging into the details and getting the minutia put together in in a in a good way, I think it's going to be a good thing for the industry as a whole. Absolutely. Yeah. I would love. I mean, for me, IBCPR going to it, experiencing it was like my mecca mm. the first day i was there I walked you know set up where everyone's setting up and this is the last day of setup so most people's booth are set up and i'm just grinning 
from yeah. ear to ear, yeah. looking at these <laughs> monumental booths. And, you know, the, the cigars that I smoke every day are here and the people and the Litos and the yeah. Fuentes and the Newmans and the Padrones. I mean, you, you just, it's like a kid in a candy store. Yeah. And you just can't get over it. And there's not even enough time in the whole trade show to see it all. Oh, no way. To experience no way. it all. So I really think that this opportunity for consumers to experience it is huge. Yeah. And if manufacturers do some education, some seminars, some partying as far as, you know, hosting some yeah. mixers or hosting uh, some some music events, it's just going to be, you could come six years in a row and have a totally different experience every time. Yeah. Mm. I rem I'll never forget when I was back when I was with Blind Man's Puff. Um, that first time I went to the trade show, just like you said, and it's it's like walking into Disney for a for a cigar nerd. It's like walking into Disneyland. Yeah, and yeah. and then you get that. Then I you know I try to I try to hold it together, but I found myself getting starstruck. You know, always there's there's all these people who I've been following. You know them as you know cigar celebrities for lack of a better term. You know and loving their products and, and loving their passion for premium tobacco. And then all of a sudden they're right there and they've got all these, you know, it's all bright and happy and, you know, fun. And, and it's just, it's this bonkers environment. And, um, yeah, I think if it'll bring, if it'll help the industry continue to effectively get the message out that premium cigars are in a completely different universe than than all other tobacco products that's the big yeah, thing for down. me hands down. that uh you know there's too much there's too much these days with you know anything with the word tobacco attached to it being lumped in the same category so if if consumer day if calling it pca whatever it is as long as that leads to um more awareness even for non-cigar people to realize okay the, somebody who has you know who smokes a few cigars a week they're 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 not the same as you know it, it, it's a completely different lifestyle choice than chain smoking camels so and, and if it helps with that i'm all for it jeff uh haugen the guy who owns crux cigars mm -hmm. and tobacco grove yeah he always said his dad told him this and i kind of took it on as well the last cigar of the day especially like that cigar on friday for me it's a cigar on friday at the smoke shop yeah that's the exclamation point to my week to my day yeah to everything like even if i go home and i light a cigar on the car right home and then i finish it in my backyard while cooking dinner like how great is that yeah to relax enjoy tobacco enjoy premium cigars yeah at the end of the day exactly mm -hmm. it doesn't get any better than that for me yeah, yeah. This, that's my favorite you know that relaxation yep. Where you just you just light you just light up and you just unplug. Nothing time. Yeah. It could be watching a sunset, it could be watching your kids play, it could be grilling, it could be binge watching something, but you're enjoying that cigar and you're sort of unplugging from your daily grind. Absolutely. You know, it's great. Um, so in addition to, you know, everything with Bovida, everything going on in the premium cigar world, you also play you have have another role. And that is that you are also a podcast host and a podcaster. So yeah. tell us about how the Box Press podcast came to be and um, what that's all been like for you. Yeah, it's been a blessing and just uh, amazing that Bobita's, you know, kind of put that um, in my lap and allowed me to kind of run with it. Um, but it's not just me doing it. You know, there's, you know, I hate to say his name because he's, this is last week and I'm pretty sad about it, but basically our producer, Luke Chase, you know, started it with me and Ramsey behind the camera and Dan from uh, marketing who leads our whole division kind of just said, you know, this is, this is something that we want to bring to our customers. We want to bring this to our viewers. And I thought it was a unique way. And I kind of grappled with the idea of, you know, well, really what, what is it going to be like? And Luke had a clear vision. He was like, it's going to be, personal conversation it's yeah. going to be getting to know the the men and women behind these cigar brands mm. it's just going to be relaxed it's going to be something where you don't have to really worry about you know 
talking about a cigar it's going to be talking about people yeah because uh, people relate to people we, right. we all relate because we like cigars but uh, that's really the vision of it yeah um, it's been a blessing because i've gotten to talk and ask questions to to people and you know get on a really cool emotional level surprisingly like you guys had robert holt on i interviewed him i asked him a question oh. and all of a sudden i just lost it yeah it's like i don't know where this came from but there's an energy there oh you yeah know? he's got an energy he does him. Dude. and it's just it's like over, contagious yeah contagious and it's just like overabundant and he's super gracious and grateful yep, and yep. you just look at a guy like that and you're just like man i want to yeah. be like that yeah. yeah you know so it's i i hope that the podcast um box press brings some of that yeah to people because you know mm. these cigar manufacturers are just like you and i yeah absolutely you know they just they have a really cool job yeah <laughs> right yeah. and that's the thing they have uh, we talk about this a lot you know, any business that you're in, it's all about relationships, but there's something that that is almost tenfold in the premium cigar business. It's just so relationship driven. It's mm -hmm. so yeah. personal. Absolutely. It's that, that interpersonal, you know, uh, interaction. It's just, you know, people sitting down from every walk of life, you know, they, they happen to be enjoying cigars. Um, but when you get to that moment where as great as the cigars are, where the cigar sorts of sort of fades away and then it's just you and one other person or a couple other people. And you're just sort of talking about life, talking about your marriages, your kids, your job, your whatever it is. And, you know, again, the cigar is great, but when the cigar fades away, that's when it gets good. Right. Yep. You know, and, um, I've really, I, I have to say, I, I have dug what you're doing with the podcast and, Thank you. and I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I watch and listen. Yep. And, uh, you know, I, I encourage everybody that's a fan of how about that cigar to check out, subscribe and, and, and all that to the box press podcast, because it's good stuff. Thank you. Very and, much. uh, we've, uh, we've got a question. Jay wants to know who can we expect to see on future box press episodes? Well, we have a lot in the hopper. Um, I'm going to have to rack my brain a little bit, but just some of the stuff we did were, Lido and Tony Gomez. That awesome. was an amazing one. Um, Lisette from EPC. She got mm, on. Oh, wow. Um, nice. We did. It's We got one with Eric Espinoza. Awesome. Um, you know, we got the, we just have so much coming up. I have more in the hopper that are nice. coming. I'm just super excited for the content that's coming out. I yeah. mean, it's getting, you know, podcasts in general, any sort of interview style. Yeah. It takes some going through and getting kind of the kinks worked out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I feel like we're getting to that stage where we kind of got most of our kinks worked out. And now we're going to be getting some good, good content yeah. for the viewers. And thank you to all those who already follow. I mean, we get a lot of messages. People just like to sit down, light a cigar, listen to the story yep. and yeah. go from there. And yeah. Like, that's all I want to be able to provide to people because that's what I'd be doing right now. It's <laughs> what I do to every other podcast that I listen yeah. to. I sit down and I go, wow. They're interviewing this person or they're talking about this is great yeah. yep and so. we're the same way i mean i i uh i i sit down and i light up a cigar at home you know at the end of the day light up a cigar and i watch or listen to other cigar podcasts and um or or when i'm behind the wheel when i'm driving right you know and it's uh it's great because i get to learn a lot about the industry but at the same time i get to learn about kind of what not to not to spout a sort of silly cliche but it, it's kind of interesting to find out what makes those people tick you know that Absolutely. that have been really successful in this industry just to find out you know what it was like what what parts were easy what were the hardships what were the hurdles they had to overcome you mm -hmm. know and uh and just learning about that and how it brought them to where they are today um you know in that in that business it's yeah. just so cool to learn about we were it talking is. about books earlier. If you haven't yeah. already picked up Padron's memoir, Ooh. Book, oh, I have highly it. recommend. I mean, from just the caveat of it is like the the kind of cliff notes. It's like starting a business, not having anywhere to go, then finding somewhere to go, then dealing with uh, the government kind of revolting and having to move out, then dealing with attempted assassinations and yeah. bombings and threats. I mean, the guy through all of that he just kept going and yeah. his son now is keeps going it's just 
it's a really good story. If you guys haven't picked it up already, I think it's like 50 bucks and it goes, the proceeds go to charity. So That's it's awesome. really just like a, if you like books and you want some cool pictures of Padron and the oh, factory and everything that they've totally done. Totally worth it. Totally uh, I mean, worth they got it. a picture of him sitting down with Castro. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. Really cool. I and the it. stuff that he did to help create uh, the Cuban American relationship. You know, hats off to the Patron family for yeah, making that happen. Yeah, hundred percent, absolutely. Um, well, I've, we got some lightning round questions, but we'll come back to those. Um, uh, we're gonna go now to useless facts of the week. Um, and since you know we're talking about Bovida, we're ta- you know Bovida is um, you know it's a product that helps us keep our cigars fresh and in the best possible condition. But as we talked about, there are other things that it turns out people store in in differently humid locations and i was completely blown away by this when i knew and i'm a i'm a fan of this but i never it's something i never even had heard about before um and it turns out in 2002 there was a major league baseball team that were getting discouraged by seeing lower average stats than other teams and you think well there's a million different reasons behind that but because of because of some particular factors, this team decided to take all their baseballs and store them in a humidor. So they built walk-in humidors and they store all their baseballs in walk-in humidors. Hmm. And they steadily started to see those, those average stats increase over the years. And then starting last year, uh, a second team started doing the same thing. And I have a feeling we're going to see more of it. We started uh, a little project with the MLB on bats as well. So okay. they have these sleeves, put the bovida in it, and then clip it shut, and the bats stay humidified as well so that they don't crack and that there's more spring to the wood okay. for the ball. Now, obviously, the ball also plays a factor yeah. in mm-hmm. being humidified as well. But, yeah, we've been we've worked on a couple of projects like that. That's really cool. cool. That's well, fun. You you probably have you know you probably know just seeing the team names, but I was wondering if 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 uh, if Garrett knows who that first team was in two thousand two, and think about it from a location standpoint, mm-hmm. you know. And you may so, you may know this who the teams are. I'm thinking either Twins Brewers. Um. Twins, Brewers, uh, Yankees, not Yankees. The Yankees don't need no help. No, they don't. (laughs) Mets. Those are my three. No. No. Four words. Go West, young man. Seattle. No. Super human. The first, the first team in O2 was, was Colorado. Oh, okay. And then the team just last year was uh, the Diamondbacks. Oh, Diamondbacks. Gosh, what an idiot. Because you think Horse. about the, the elevation well, in thinking, Colorado. You know, the dry. Yeah, and during then, baseball uh, season, we're not suffering for humidity here. Yeah, here, I mean, Got shoot, it. it's, what is it outside right now? 80. 80% humidity yeah. right now. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, if you've got a humidor, you need to season just leave it out on the front step but arizona for sure <laughs> jay guest rockies um and, and just a reminder to you guys uh watching right now uh please continue to put comments um we're gonna pick a couple viewers at random tonight to win a couple prizes here from bovida so exactly keep those comments coming so uh, that was our useless fact of the week. Not so useless, but kind of interesting. I like it. They're, they're, they're actually storing uh, baseballs, and now we find out baseball bats yeah. in, uh, in uh, you know, with humidity I control. Love it. And if you think about it, it just makes sense, you know? Absolutely. So uh, now we move to my absolute favorite segment of every show, Numero de los Muertos. Hit us. What's the number? I'm I'm going a little morbid. Oh boy. Here's a little warning. Going a little morbid. Okay. Numbers 27 a year. 27 a year. Annually. So 27 people die from this every year. Yep. 
Um, is it globally or just in the U.S.? Globally. Globally. Well, and I'll give you a hint. There's only two countries that are known where this happens. Okay, that helps. Um, uh, is it uh, caused by... A, are the deaths caused by an, uh, another creature? No. Okay. Ooh, I was going to go animal. So yeah. yeah. So no. this is like 20 questions. Again. Sort of, yeah. Can yeah. narrow it down? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Is it by, uh, you know, motorized uh, something? No. No? Sickness? No, sir. Stupidity? <laughs> That's all. That always <laughs> plays a factor. So I think it's got to be one of these, right? Yeah, that I, always I, plays a factor. I would argue that that plays a factor. Um. I'll uh, not I'll give another I'll give another little clue. Okay. This has been around for thousands of years. So it's been around for a long time. It's not man made. Is it man made? Mm-hmm. Oh, it is man made. Mm-hmm. It's not motorized. Mm-hmm. It's not a disease. It's well, it's not the knives, is it? No, <laughs> I just lost it in the kitchen with right. these super sharp knives, and I couldn't handle it anymore. And I only down. I accidentally plunged this knife into my carotid artery. You know, you just keep only happens, and all of a sudden it just gets out of hand. It does out of hand. Hey, See, no pun uh, intended. <laughs> um, it uh, so again, only two countries are known to practice this. Mm. practice this so it's an activity mm. some sort of testing are both countries on the same continent yes are we on that continent we are not is it a highly populated continent yep is it the most highly populated continent no okay it's a tough one any more hints that aren't going to just totally give it away? Mm-hmm. It's a punishment. Ooh. It's not firing squad, is it? Mm-mm. That's still legal. Actually, there's guillotine? a couple states. Guillotine? No, not guillotine. No, but I would or think, guillotine? I mean, if it's going to be a form of punishment, you know, it would be one that's rarely used. Correct. And I would think firing squad is rarely used. But That it's is not, correct. It's not firing squad. Right. And it's only legal again in to or it's only practiced and documented currently in two countries you're killing me smalls yeah i i I think you might have to hit us with it all right the two countries are sudan and somalia and it's a punishment Mm-hmm. Is it caning? Mm-mm. Stoning. No, but um, that's the second um, most popular way to die or execution in both of these countries is stoning. Now, is this punishment meant to be the death penalty or Correct. does it just sometimes so result it is in a that? death? No, it is a death penalty. Okay. And stoning is the second? Mm-hmm. Is it hanging? Nope. Because I, I, I go, would hope there's no places left where hanging is still practiced. Go more morbid. Mo- oh, oh, it's not beheading, is it? Mm-mm. No, I. It's worse than beheading. It really yeah. is. See, I thought beheading like old, it's, old medieval ways. It's but. worse. What is worse than? It's not like having the throat slit, is it? Mm-mm. What? Oh, this is getting. Oh, getting getting the creeps stoning, right now. Stoning is the second most popular way to die. Are you serious? That's what he said. Yeah, by execution. By what? execution. So, th- so what's so, before stoning? Because stoning is like cruel, right? And it's worse than stoning. Yeah, yeah. Because like poison, <gasps> and- burning. Oh no, it's oh. not burning. I got anybody right. else? Anybody else has yeah, got is it? Anybody, here? anybody else have any guesses uh, here? Matthew, Trinda. Justin Bieber music. <laughs> <laughs> Cruel and unusual. Oh, oh, that would be bad. Oh, Trenda, that's. 
marriage. That would oh marriage? No, marriage, marriage is marriage is good. Um just be <laughs> Michael That's, Bolton music. Mike, <laughs> why should I change my name? <laughs> it's okay. So it's worse than beheading. It's worse than Justin Bieber music. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's uh, think of the most popular, one of the most popular executions of all time. Electrocution, right? Electrocution. Mm-mm. I'm talking about a single event. Oh, is it crucifixion? No way. Crucifixion, 27 people a year. They died. still do that? Wow. That's messed up. I did not know that that was even I had practice. no clue. That is stuff that, wow. Holy cow. Oh, my gosh. Yep. That so is yikes. Don't go and mess up if you're... Uh, in Sudan? Happen to hang out in Sudan or oh, Somalia. Oh, man. I mean, I'm wow. gonna. I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say maybe wait a few years before you go to those maybe. countries. Let them get things straightened out a little bit. First. Yeah. Cow, yeah. Well, and and um, you know, wow, the political unrest in that region right now for the last oh, it's been 20, 30 years. Yeah. has been terrible. Oh my gosh. And um, I mean, we've got missionaries in in uh, church I go to in both countries, and yeah, we get reports of just the that's. Brutal. I mean, so, you, you seriously got to, you know, have your stuff together before you're going to go over to one of those places, man. Yep. Sorry, I'm running out of uh, great material for my my number, and no, we, had to, you, we had to go dark. That, that, was, was, that was it, man. That was that dark, was but it's awful. it's at the same yeah. time it's it's fascinating that there's still places to do that. that. Yeah. I never guess that. All right, so let's uh, let's lighten it up again and go back to a, uh, we'll f- finish things out with sort of a little bit of a lightning round. Did you see the new Lion King? The, have, you did, seen, uh, have you seen that? <laughs> Toy Story How 4. How cute was that? <laughs> um, so, Rob, if you uh, if you could give one piece of advice to new cigar consumers, and I have a feeling I know what the question is going to be, or what the answer is going to be, but if you could give one piece of advice to new con- cigar consumers, what would it be? Uh, besides use Boveda? Besides um, that. I would definitely recommend... And, you know, this is different because it's coming from me. It would be to get um, into your local shop. And if you don't have a local shop, join either an online club mm. or, or even one that – try to create one that uh, meets. Because yeah. I really think for me, sitting down, having a cigar with people and and conversing and just relaxing is kind of the best part of the whole thing. But I know there's some people out there that are more introverted and they like to just do it on their own and, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, by themselves. And I get that, but I really like the social aspect. Yeah, so, I'm yeah. with you. The, yep. the being a part of that community, you know. Yeah. And, uh, even and even for introverts, because I'm a little bit of an introvert, but um, there's just something about being a part of that community, you know. Yeah, and, you can still be introverted and go into the shop on a Friday and you know have like a one-on-one conversation or just listen. Yeah. To other guys that are more you know outgoing or you know outspoken. Yeah. And totally. just get entertained because <laughs> that's quite frankly what I do sometimes. I just get entertained. So if you uh, if if there was one piece of advice that you could give to cigar retailers, what would it be? Mm. You got to know your stuff. Um, Amen. I don't, Amen. I don't ever like a retailer that judges a book by its cover. You know, I don't like retailers that don't value somebody even how they look because uh, mm-hmm. it's just not it's not okay. Mm-hmm. You have to. Treat everybody as if whether they're buying that four dollar stick or they're buying that twenty four dollar stick. Yeah, it's all part of the lifestyle. Yeah, it's Amen. all part of wanting to enjoy something right now. Whether we're reaching for that less expensive or that more expensive cigar, we're all here for the same reason, and we have to treat everyone equally in that regard. Yeah, so. yeah, great answer. Um, and the last one, uh, if you had one piece of advice that you could give to uh, cigar companies, what would it be? I think for me, I'm not just attached to the cigar anymore. I'm attached to a little bit of the story. And some of that, those stories can kind of seem like marketing, um, can seem like, um, and I'm not really attached to those, but I really like to get to know the maker, the story behind it, yeah. maybe the sacrifices that they had to do. 
it just it you know we said this in the beginning cigars are relation you know relationships they're relational and for me that's kind of what makes me gravitate towards cigar brands mm -hmm. yeah so even if the cigar wasn't a home run um or maybe you know out of the 16 cigars that they offer i don't like three of them it really doesn't matter i'll still you know smoke one but uh i really do get attached to the brand story yeah and i think that's super important yeah absolutely i agree you yep. know the the culture the history you know even if it's a newer cigar company they still have a story and hearing those absolutely. stories is one of the most fun parts it doesn't have to be a family of tobacconists it doesn't have to be yeah. a family of growers it just has to be heartfelt yeah there you go passionate yep. yeah totally totally um, so let's, um, let's go with our, uh, notable smokables oh, yeah. of the week. Um, and if you have to pull, pull some up on your phone. So, so Rob, we basically just, you know, talk about some of the stuff we smoked over the course of the last week that was interesting to us. Uh, it could be old stuff, could be new stuff. Oh, um, cool. my, uh, my first one was, uh, coming off of the interview we had with Robert Holt last week. Um, my first one was I smoked that Rose of Sharon. That's the desert rose so that's on your list too oh yeah and uh robert and sharon it's just it's stupid it's killer just really you know the the cigar already was one that i was a fan of but something about that vitola um that uh, that desert rose vitola uh just really really there was something different about that cigar but still fantastic so so very good there uh, yeah, uh, piggyback on that one, as you know. And then uh, for me, the Aurora um, uh, uh, Dark. The La Aurora Dark? Yeah. Was that the... Uh, I'm trying to remember what the band looks like, that one. It's escaping me right now. Oh, that yeah, that's the new one. The new one. Dude. The, no, that Aroha. Sorry, not La Aurora. Aroha. 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 Yeah, Aroha. Yeah. I almost picked one of those up today, um, but I grabbed a couple other things instead. But I will be trying that one definitely. Dark chocolatey. Oh, nice. And just nice. Um, it it it, uh, it surprised me on how smooth it was for such a dark cigar with the flavors. Yeah. Not not by uh, the the color, but just how smooth they got those deep chocolatey espresso flavors. And yet, because typically when you go that dark in flavors, you got some spice, you got some pepper, you got some of that bite in there. Yeah. And it was smooth almost until the last third. Nice. And then you started to get uh, some of that. But nice. Fantastic. Is there anything new you've tried recently, Rob, or, or something old yeah. you revisited that you haven't had in a while? There's a scar. Um, and I don't, I shouldn't say it because I don't want everyone to gravitate towards it and buy it all out. <laughs> but, uh, I got a chance to interview um, John Oliva Jr. Mm. from Oliva Tobacco yep. Company. So pretty much all the cigar. I mean, this is made at Noxa, which yeah. is their facility. But they grow a bunch of the wrapper and a bunch of the filler and binder, but mainly wrapper and binder that's used out on the market. Yeah. And I got a chance to sit down and inter interview him in Tampa. And he handed me a stick. He says, this is a stick that we, we make, and, you know, we kind of release it underneath. Our brand is called the, uh, I believe it's called Donna Lydia, uh, named after the wife of the first founder of Oliva Tobacco. And it was exactly what I like in a cigar. It's that chewy, savory, complex, yeah, but not overpowering in any one direction. Mm. So many flavors. And I was eating it, or sorry, I was, dr I was smoking it while I was eating and drinking a really good meal. And it's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, is eat some good food with a oh, good yeah. cigar. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And when that cigar goes well with everything that I'm eating and drinking, I just get like it's another level for me. Yeah. And I was just blown away. I was like, this goes good with the pheasant and the the bacon that's oh, on the pheasant. pheasant bacon. And then the the beer the beer that I drink non alcoholic beer and the beer was kind of malty and hoppy and it was going good with that. Yeah just blown away by that cigar and i actually called him and i was just like dude thank you so much yeah for making that cigar same poly girl uh no caliber this was um class dollar no this is this is getting more on the craft level 
Um, I believe the name of it was um, uh, something Hound. Uh, I can't remember. I took a picture of it. It was just, it's a really good uh, I'm a, craft. Non alcoholic. I'm down. Yeah. Because that's my, that's my jam. Yeah. It you was know. so good. Um, just everything about it was just, just great. Awesome. A wonderful cigar. Yeah. That's great. Having those experiences where you can eat and drink and, you know, enjoy a cigar at the same mm -hmm. time. Flavors. Yeah. It's not easy just to find a good combination. Flavor. Uh, yeah. But when Sometimes it works. It's a miss. When it it works. is a miss. Oh, man. This cigar is overpowering yeah. this or that. But yep. when it goes together, that like this cigar, El Bracho, could go really good with a meal. Really yeah. good. Dude. Yeah. It's really going good. great with tea. Yeah. yeah. It goes good with anything. This is my go to. This is a fantastic yeah. cigar. I had forgotten. Yeah. It really, I, really it's, I haven't had one in about a year. And I, I, again, had forgotten, you know, that it's one I really enjoy. Um, so I, um, just uh, when was it? A couple days ago, uh, Sunday. I um, finally tried the new uh, the new my father La Promesa. Oh yeah, um, very good. It is good. So I have to be honest. I was disappointed by the my father release last year, the one called uh, uh, Grand Oferta. Mm -hmm. I was disappointed by it. I don't think it was a bad cigar. I just, I was personally underwhelmed by the ones that I smoked. And this La Promesa, I've only had the one, but I'd say it's a, it's, it's a win for them. Uh, I really enjoyed nice. that cigar. And uh, my last one would be a um, David off late hour. Oh yeah. Yep. They're just, I mean, well, you talked about it last week and I went to Stogie's and I was like, dang it. I <laughs> got to get it. Sorry. I didn't mean to put that bug in your head. Yeah. Well, it was like somebody talking about a ribeye, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, oh, I got to get a ribeye. Yeah. And I got the ribeye. Well, and that's the ribeye of cigars. And I it mean, really it's just, is. it's, it's so just, it's just rich and hearty and yeah. it just, it kicks you in the gut, but in a good way. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, my last one was the, uh, another new release. The, the, Tatuaje uh, ME2, so the Mexican Experiment 2, um, and I got the Toro size, and great flavors. I mean, it. this is one of those cigars where I said to myself, this is really, this, this actually has those, like, dark, bitter cocoa flavors to it. It's, it really? wasn't muddy, it was, it was that true, it, it, it had that Mexican San Andreas, you know, some of what even you get in this El Baracho is that earthiness mixed with, you know, this dark, bitter cocoa sort of component to it with sweetness on the back end and a retro hail that kind of burns a little bit, but in a good way. So um, that was very, uh, it, it had some combustion issues, but, you know, I had just bought it at the cigar shop. So who knows, you know, what could have caused that? It could have been anything. It just, you know, happens sometimes. But uh, if you see those on the shelf, they're still available at some shops in Twin Cities area and a lot of other, uh, you know, shops in cities around the country. So uh, definitely if you see that new Tatuaje mm -hmm. ME2, Mexican Experiment 2, definitely give that a try. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I've got an idea for the giveaway. Yeah. If I can. Shoot. Are we, are we ready to do it? I don't see why not. All right. Because I don't have like Rob. a random number generator pulled right. up. But if you do, then... I don't. But what okay. I'm going to have Rob do is I'm going to have you pick two numbers between one and six. Got it. J5 Field can't win. Okay. Uh, okay. One and five. Okay, good. Well, <laughs> and w so here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll, we'll have Rob pick one number. Okay. And we'll we'll give one away to the live commenters on the show. And then we'll give another one away to comments left after Perfect. the fact. I'll okay. Look. Yeah. I'm going to go with three then. Dang it. Trenda. <laughs> yeah. We have a winner. We do have a winner. Who is that? Matt Trenda. Matt Trenda, you have won a prize pack from Bovida. And uh, we will uh, we will get to that get that to you as soon as possible. So thanks for leaving comments and joining us on the live broadcast. Yep. Thanks, and uh, those of you who have uh, not finished watching, if you're watching after the fact, go ahead and leave a comment because we'll choose another winner yep. uh, within the next couple of days. 
we'll say we'll give you another couple days to for those because a lot of people can't watch live they'll watch after the fact so if you haven't yet, yet left a comment um you're still uh still eligible um and that that'll count you know even even comments from now so um thanks everybody for watching and listening um a couple programming notes for stuff coming up next tuesday we will uh have a guest on the show, Mr. Michael Giannini from Ventura Cigar Company. We're very excited to talk to him. He's got a long, long history in the premium cigar business, uh, from General Cigar to um, uh, Ventura Cigar Company now, and uh, they have some exciting stuff that they came out with this year. So very excited to talk to him. Uh, coming up on September third, we will be mm. meeting with uh, Mr. Jeff Borshowitz from. Corona Cigar Company and the Florida Sun Grown Tobacco Farm. So he has he, he's another one of these people in the industry that wears so many hats and he's he he deals in so many different areas of the business. Very excited to talk to him about, you know, all the different things that he works with uh, in the premium cigar world. And then beyond excited, like giddy excited, September 10th, we will speak with Mr. Steve Saka from Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, who has been in the premium cigar business for, oh, I want to say, 30 since years. Eisenhower? Since Eisenhower. <laughs> <laughs> and he uh, he's just a wealth of tobacco knowledge. And, and one of the things that I told him I really want to pick his brain about is, you know, there's, there's so much in the premium cigar world, you know, when you dig down into the, you know, the, the, the deep sort of intricate, things about tobacco itself you know about the the actual leaf and where it's grown and how it's grown and different seed varietals and different primings and things like that and then as cigar consumers you have different layers and different levels of cigar consumers you've got you know true like like dead set cigar nerds like we are and then you've got mm -hmm. casual you know cigar smokers and then you've got new cigar smokers and you know finding that balance of you know getting the information out there to the cigar consumers in a way that they can digest and, and remember and, and also to help them sort of appreciate more about what really goes into these products. And uh, so we're going to talk to him about that and, you know, uh, you know, find out what, you know, what makes a, uh, a better informed cigar consumer when mm. it comes to the tobacco itself. Mm -hmm. So very excited to talk to him. And uh, I think before we go, Rob, if you would just uh, let yeah. people know where they can find out about Boveda. Obviously, uh, if you don't know, you can find most all of these products at um, brick and mortar shops. But where else could people go for information? And Yeah, go to your for, brick and mortar if you can't find anything there um, or what you want. Obviously, bovedainc.com is going to be everything we sell. Plus, we're going to have blogs on there. We have write-ups. We have you know, links to our YouTube page for box press. You can download box press on any uh, podcast platform. We just got a lot of content going on. So um, we also have a section on YouTube of uh, tobacco 101. Awesome. So I answer oh, fantastic. some of those questions of my RH levels too low. Do this. How do I season? How do I, what RH level do I pick for my humidor? So just a, a wealth of content. We fantastic. Hope that is valuable. That's outstanding. Good deal. Yeah. yeah Rob. Hey, Man, seriously, thanks. Thank you so thanks much. So much for, for sitting down yeah, with us. You guys. Uh, we had a great time here, you know, learning more about, you know, keeping our cigars in the best condition possible and just yep. hanging out, talking about some other stuff. It's always a good time. And uh, we hope to yeah. do it again someday. Absolutely. Yeah. Anytime, awesome. guys. All right. Hey, thanks, guys. As always, don't forget, like, share, subscribe. Uh, find us on the audio podcast as well. For those of you who don't watch, but you choose to listen, thanks so much for listening. Uh, take a few minutes and, uh, you know, give us a, give us a thumbs up and all that good stuff. Uh, and until we see you next time, burn cigars, not bridges. Take care guys. Thanks.